We're Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, and we're a real couple with real problems who almost called it quits. I was very frustrated. I became very disconnected, very um, jaded and, and cold. We have four children going on 20 years of marriage, and we practice what we preach. Our mission, to change the way couples relate to one another and teach them the skills needed to improve the quality of their relationships. This, this is the Couples, Couples Academy, Academy Show. Show. Welcome everyone. This is the Couples Academy show. My name is Hassani and I'm riding solo today, but it's good to have each and every one of you with me here today. So we want to know who you are, where you are, where you're dialing in from, what city, what state, what country. As you know, Couples Academy, we're just a place, we're just a place where people come together uh, and talk about love, life and relationships. And today we're talking about the top, come on now, the top complaints, the top 20 complaints of unhappy wives because y'all know y'all be complaining <laughs> there's actually a book out there um i found on uh, amazon it says the problem with women is men <laughs> and so we're going to talk about this now this doesn't mean that you're in a dire situation in your relationship you could be in a great relationship but the point is there are these complaints and so it's not about the the, the angle we're taking is not which i stopped complaining no but these are legitimate complaints that that husbands need to be aware of and so we're giving voice to you on this show because as you know we're equal opportunists we're gonna flip it the pendulum will swing in the other direction the, the, the other direction and we will be talking about the top complaints of unhappy husbands and so is it an opportunity for men to get upset and all you do is complain and why can't you ever just be happy with where we are no it's an opportunity for growth to say okay this is actually a legitimate issue it's not just you complaining about it but if this is what women are complaining about then maybe that i maybe maybe i should give some i don't know some focus and attention to this so that we can figure out how to change things uh in our relationship and so as we go throughout the course of the show i would be interested in hearing what your topic complaints are about your spouses even if you're not an unhappy wife you can still generally be happy but they're those things that you're complaining about so let's make this interactive as we go forward but really quickly uh what is it february 11th through 13th that is our new date for the last chance week and we're excited about that we already have quite a few couples that are registered for that if you are ready to do that make sure you go to the website click the link set up a discovery call and let's have that conversation but what i wanted to do is share with you a testimonial not just from one typically i'll have one person or one couple but we did um a last chance weekend we had a bunch of virtual couples in there as well and so i wanted to get testimonials from all of them collectively so you're about to watch this video and then we'll get into the conversation so be right back yeah it's just really impactful this weekend and um i'm, I'm just ready um I'm, I'm ready me and my wife was like thinking about all of our married couple friends like you know what we're gonna tell them that they need to do something like this because this is just this is amazing. Um, I'm very appreciative of this weekend because honestly going in it, Aaron was a lot more optimistic than I was. I thought it was gonna be like other marriage counseling we've been through and I was just like, all right, I just, when I get through this, let's see how it's gonna go. And um, it was surprising, a, a, a great surprise. We've been through counseling before. This ain't counseling. This is something different. This is like, yeah, like surgery, coaching, counseling all in one. Normally the counseling that we go through is we sit on the couch for an hour and just talk about dumb stuff and nobody pours into us. All we do is just sit there. And we actually had a counselor say to us, it doesn't matter to me whether you guys stay married or not. It's just my job to kind of help you make a decision. And so it was like, is this kind of the thing that we're going to now? Like when you look at your life and you, like I said it in my letter to my wife, like they're insurmountable odds that I, I mean, I'm going into this thing. I'm like, there's no way in the world that I'm going to get any kind of help in three days with, with all of that. And I know that you said that, you know, the intensive is like eight months of counseling. No, this thing was like a year because the extended time you gave us the, the effort that you put into it, the off schedule stuff that you did flowing with the spirit, man, 
but you made me work. And I'm just speaking for myself. You challenged me. You made me work. I came in with walls up. I'll just be honest. Like, here we go. Another counseling session. Don't know what to expect. Um, but you have helped break down walls that I've had up for a long time. Um, you know, as mentioned, this is not our first rodeo. Um, and this is the quickest I've been able to really forgive my husband. I've said it like, okay, I accept your apology. I forgive you. But I felt heavy. I don't feel heavy now. I just, I don't feel dark. I don't feel heavy. She was very reserved uh, for the most part. Yesterday, we, we it was conflict. She was like, I don't think it's worth it. It's a waste of your money, blah, blah, blah. I was going to get her a purse versus doing this, <laughs> doing this. So I was like, nah, nah, nah. I said, from here on out, I'm making investments in us. And the other investments, you know, we'll do later. So um, even talking about value and um, but today, man, she cracked like I've never seen her crack before in the history of knowing her. And and she is a hard person to crack. Man, we, we gained so much this weekend. I think it was pretty evident when I came in. I was very guarded. Um, this experience is crazy. <laughs> I would definitely recommend it for other people. What you guys are able to do for me personally within three days. I tell you, I came in like, I'm looking, okay, interviewing lawyers, attorneys. So within three days, just the leaps and bounds of just slowly breaking down those guards and looking at what other options there are and tools that you gave us. Like even the, the communication exercise, like if we would have known this, Five years ago, three years ago, we probably wouldn't be, be sitting here. Um, I was a little apprehensive doing the couples uh, choosing this option with a group, but I would not have chosen any other option. My husband made me smile today. I have not smiled at this man in three months. <laughs> I have not wanted to look at him. We haven't slept. I mean, it's just completely walls between us. So it, I haven't been this close without us arguing. It, just an amazing weekend, leaps and bounds. I do, I really appreciate this group setting because you can glean from the other couples. You can kind of say, hey, like, I'm not the only one or I'm not crazy for thinking the way that I think or fit, feeling the way that I feel. Like, it's not just me. And it's, you know, it's something powerful just even in that, even just knowing that I'm not going through this storm, you know, by myself, even though everybody's situation is different. We all have a commonality um, between all of us. There it is, guys. Last Chance Weekend. It is powerful when you hear a collective voice uh, from couples talk about the impact, how there was there were reservations and hesitations initially, and then they decided to do what was uncomfortable, to put themselves in a position that they weren't sure what was going to happen, but they knew they needed something. And by doing it, they were quite surprised and amazed at the transformation. Uh, and the restoration of their relationship. So this is this is what we're all about, helping couples to truly transform their lives and relationships. And so as we continue to go throughout the year of 2022, you know, we celebrate Valentine's Day every single year. We get flowers, we get flowers and candy. We go on uh, nice trips, we do restaurants, we do all types of destinations. And then we come back to the same struggles, the same situation. And it's almost like we took a day to push pause on all of our issues just to pick them back up the next day. But why not do something that invests in the future of your relationship? That's what the last chance weekend is for. So hope you guys take advantage of that. I think it will be extremely helpful. Many of the wives who come are unhappy and they leave happy. 
So perfect transition into today's topic because many of these complaints, you have to understand, even though people are coming to us because of crisis, once we've gotten beyond the crisis, there's life after the crisis and there's the normal challenges, struggles, complaints, and all the things that you deal with. And I would say, you know, I found this article online and as I was going through it, I'm like, man, this is pretty consistent with what we typically hear. So we're gonna go through them and see if these resonate with you. So number one, number one complaint, of unhappy wives never helps around the house. Now, first of all, when you hear the word never, never is an absolute. And so oftentimes anybody who who's accused of never or always doing something will automatically come to the defense and give that one scenario, possibly two where they have. So, OK, maybe not never. But if the general consensus is I'm doing the majority of the work, you are not. It, be, it presents a problem. And interestingly enough, you know, there's been an evolution of men because because one time, many, 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 many years ago, where there was a division of labor, women were the primary caretakers of the home because men were outside of the home and they were working from sun up to sundown. And so therefore, their, their contribution to the household was about 10%. And then there's been a shift, women entering into the workforce. Now you got two people working jobs and they're coming home. But it seems like for women, they work a nine to five job. And then when they come home, they're entering into their second shift, which is from five to nine. Whereas men come home working that nine to five a shift and they don't necessarily pick up the same duties and responsibilities that the wife has in the household so it can become overbearing it could become too much they're now overwhelmed trying to figure it out yes women are multitaskers and they could do a lot but it doesn't mean that they don't suffer stress and they're not dealing with why am i doing all these things on my own this is not what i signed up for and so one of the biggest desires of a woman, one of the biggest emotional needs of a woman is domestic support. Having support in the home when it comes to the daily care of the household and the children within the household. Now, everybody's situation is different. I get it. You know, some men work exhausting jobs. Uh, we have many couples who work completely different shifts. They never even see each other till the end of the weekend. So, it's hard to be able to help out in the way that one would. And so if you're living an unconventional, non-traditional life based upon work schedules, you have to figure out what works for you. There's got to be some type of balance, even if it's a balancing act. So when we say balance, we're not necessarily saying there has to be 50-50 uh, split uh, distribution or delegation of responsibilities in the home. That may not be realistic for your household, but there should be more of an involvement and more of a desire to become involved in the domestic affairs because that's where many women are finding a struggle and challenge. So whether it be cooking everything, whether it be cleaning everything, whether it be being completely involved in his children's lives, we have to step up in those spaces and show ourselves to be worthy, you know, for us to be the head of the home, but not have any responsibility within the home is challenging. And so uh, there's got to be a shift in that particular area. And I know this is something that many people resonate with. And so that's why we're excited about this new year in this new season, because you can establish a new pathway, a new journey together. And so if that simply means having a conversation and sitting down and delegating responsibilities that are easy wins for that husband based upon timing, whatever that means, she needs someone to help pick up the slack. I remember hearing women congregate at one of the sessions that we've had. And so, you know, jokingly, but probably seriously, it has been said that, you know, um, our husbands have us as wives, but every wife needs a wife, <laughs> meaning they need somebody to show up for them the way they show up for others. And so this is one of the things that we have to figure out how we as men can begin to show up for our wives, not in just a one dimensional way. Because the one dimensional approach that we typically take to relationship is financial provider. OK, but outside of that, there are other duties and responsibilities and things that that wife needs. So if you're a man listening to this, if you're a wife listening to this, maybe you've had this conversation a thousand times and it seems like, you know what, uh, they have deaf ears to you. They're not receptive. There's always a reason, a defense. 
sit down with this video, watch it together, learn together, push pause and have a, you know, a, a conversation about it to see how things can shift in the relationship as it relates to that complaint of not getting the help <coughs> that one needs. Now, this may not be everybody's problem because some people love it. I'll take care of the home front, you take care of everything else outside of the home, and if that's your situation, then boom, if it works, now here's the principle. If it works for you, and it doesn't work for your spouse, it doesn't work for the relationship. If it works for your spouse and doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for your relationship. But if it works for the both of you, then get it. Because what works in one home may be different than what works in another home. So you gotta figure that thing out. We gotta figure that thing out. So we're talking about the top 20 complaints of unhappy wives in marriage. We're just in number one. We'll be right back. You're watching the Couples Academy Show. Be right there. If you're a man and you have a pulse, then you need to join this program. You're a husband, you're a father, you're a leader. You have the weight of the world on your shoulders. You have to be everything for everyone, but do you know who and how to be for you? You're still in search of your own significance. You're in internal battle with your own vices. You're questioning, do I even know what it means to be a man? I know I'm supposed to be there for others, but what about me? The fact is you need a model. You need a code to live by, a system of principles to govern your life. You need an internal compass to guide your every decision. You need the four securities to build your own kingdom. What you need is the foundry. In short, a foundry is a facility where castings are produced by melting metal, pouring liquid metal into a mold and then allowing it to solidify. Well, this is where we're testing the metal of men. Foundry is a 12-week men's-only coaching program. It is a brotherhood that will take each man through a purification process of the heart, mind, and soul. We here at Couples Academy promise you that if you give us 12 weeks of your life, you will no longer recognize it. If you care about the improving of your life, your marriage, and your family, register today. you're watching the couples academy show these are the top 20 complaints of unhappy wives and we were talking about how they need listen wives complain that their husbands don't help out around the house actually before i actually went into it when i said what is the thing that you complain about the most i hannah said help we need help and it's right in alignment with the first and the one that we just stated so let's go to the second one because this is this is a powerful one this is a gut checker right here Number two, he doesn't know anything about the kids. Doesn't know anything about the kids. Why? Because he's busy. He's working. He's, out the, he's outside the home. He's preoccupied with other things. The wife being the main provider, caretaker, giver, teacher, you know, instructor to those children. That's the role that she has played. And so therefore, they're good. She got that. They're good. And so once again, it goes back to the one dimensional approach that men take to relationships, because we've heard all of our lives that our responsibility is to be a provider. But even if we just if that's all we did, provision is not just financial. There's emotional provision as well. Right. And so showing up, putting dollars on the table saying i've done my part i'm good now not to say that we consciously think that way or consciously do that there has been in an indoctrination a socialization and acculturation process that we have gone through where that becomes the main thing i'm not a man outside of that thing so that's what i saw that's what i've experienced that's what i've been told that's what i do when i think about my household it, i was connected to mom mom did this mom did that dad that he was working he was doing this he was doing that and if that's become the model unfortunately we begin to 
we begin to model what has been modeled for us. But we have to do things differently. And so, you know, that's been a journey that many men, even myself, have gone through trying to get closer, trying to invest more time, trying to be more intentional because children need the balance. They need that feminine masculine balance. And so, you know, I have several men in my life that do a good job of developing that relationship. And, you know, I was just talking to my daughters last night about daddy daughter day and what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go, because I realized that I've got to put in that time and that investment, because when you put in that investment, there's a return on that investment, because guess what? When they're grown and out, you want that connection. And so you've got to maximize your time and spend time with those children. And so husbands, if that's your issue, get it together. Have a sobering conversation with yourself, with your spouse, with your kids, and figure out how you can begin to incorporate more of yourself and more of your life into the lives of those children. Okay? So that's number two. Let's go to another one, guys. The third complaint. He always plays video games. Now, this is not something I can relate to because I don't play video games, but maybe for you it's different. Maybe it is video games, but maybe for you is he's always working or he's always outside the house or he's always with his friends or he's always reading or he's, all the point is there's a disconnection. He's disconnected from us and connected to something else. There is some passion and desire for something else that I don't see when it comes to me and our household. And so once again, this is not something that just your spouse is saying. This is something that a collective group of women who are in the position that your, your spouse is in is saying about their husbands. So it's something to be mindful about. So as you're hearing this list, like, man, yeah, 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 such and such complains about that too. There must be some validity to it. And so bringing it to your spouse and having the conversation, how do I show up in a disconnected way? Do I spend more time on video games? I remember there was a couple that we were working with and that was exactly it because you know what? Once they got into the game, literally hours could go by, completely disconnected, zoned in as if the rest of the world did not matter. <clears throat> and it made that spouse feel a certain type of way because guess what? It was an issue of time. And we've talked about this before, how so many couples are struggling from a time starved marriage where time is not being spent with each other. Time is being spent outside of each other, even though they're in the same physical home, there's physical proximity, but there's no quality time because they're connected to other people, connected to other things, connected to other, other activities. And that's what causes the split, the disconnect. And so sometimes it's important to reevaluate what you're doing. Not that you've got to stop playing video games. Not that you got to stop working on that car. Not that you got to stop reading books. Not that you got to stop having relationships with your friends. But it's about prioritizing time with your partner so they don't feel as if they're in competition with the video game, in competition with the friends, with the book, with the project you're working on. Because guess what? If they got the time that they needed and were fulfilled, they would say, go on out there, play your little video games. Do you think, babe? Matter of fact, let me come and join you. I don't look at the video game as a threat. It doesn't become the arch enemy of me that I'm competing with. Does that make sense? So it's about reinvesting time back into the relationship to give them what they want. Let's go to number four. We have the same arguments every day. It's like we can't bring any resolution or solution to the situation. We just complaining about the same thing, arguing about the same thing, and it becomes frustrating and exhausting, and I lose energy, and I lose, I lose all desire to want to do anything because I already know what's going to happen once we get started. I already know we're not going to have a solution. It's going to be the same old thing every single day. And so what that does is it demotivates people from getting involved in the conversation. There's a belief that sets in, well, he ain't never going to change. It's going to be the same thing as it's always been. And so what happens is apathy can begin to set into that relationship, right? You lose your desire to want to connect, to want to do, to want to live life with, to want to just be who you've been because now this new pattern has set in where I just sick and tired of always having to bring up the same thing because you're not willing to make adjustments, shifts, and changes in your life. Is this resonating with anyone? Are you catching this? Is this what's happening in your home? Are these the constant complaints that you're having? If so, it is worthy of a deeper conversation. Let's go to number five. This is a powerful one because I hear this time and time again. 
He drinks too much. <clears throat> now listen, there's nothing wrong with a drink if it is social, if it doesn't impact you in a negative way. But when drinking has taken over, and now, as they say, you can't hold your liquor. Every time a little bit of liquor gets in you, you lose all sanity. You go crazy, you go ballistic, you become angry, right? It, it, it's, it's interesting. You're drinking this alcohol that has a negative impact on your behavior, on your thinking, on your rationality. It's almost like a demon got in you. Maybe that's why they call hard liquor spirits. Hmm, Sila. think about that. And so there are individuals who literally will drink every single day, several times a day. And oftentimes it is attached to a negative emotional reaction and response that has a tremendous impact on the spouse and on the children. This is something that needs to be worked out and worked on. You need to talk about how you can begin to manage this in order for it not to bring havoc and hell into your home. I mean, I remember there was this one couple, literally they were on the verge of divorce because he would drink 24 hours a day. He literally would have wine and vodka and, 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 and what was it, gin and every type of drink you can think of, at least seven to eight bottles a day and wonder why the relationship was in a bad place. Listen guys, if you're struggling with alcohol, you're using it to sedate yourself from your problems, from your situation, and we need to have a deeper dive. And this is why we have the Foundry Program to help men overcome their vices and begin to pursue virtues. Listen, you're watching the Couples Academy show. We'll be right back in just a minute. Stay right there. If you're a man and you have a pulse, then you need to join this program. You're a husband. You're a father. You're a leader. You have the weight of the world on your shoulders. You have to be everything for everyone, but do you know who and how to be for you? You're still in search of your own significance. You're in internal battle with your own vices. You're questioning, do I even know what it means to be a man? I know I'm supposed to be there for others, but what about me? The fact is, you need a model. You need a code to live by, a system of principles to govern your life. You need an internal compass to guide your every decision. You need the four securities to build your own kingdom. What you need is the foundry. In short, a foundry is a facility where castings are produced by melting metal, pouring liquid metal into a mold, and then allowing it to solidify. Well, this is where we're testing the metal of men. Foundry is a 12-week men's only coaching program. It is a brotherhood that will take each man through a purification process of the heart, mind, and soul. We here at Couples Academy promise you that if you give us 12 weeks of your life, you will no longer recognize it. If you care about the improving of your life, your marriage, and your family, register today. guys top 10 top 20 wish it was just 10 but it's 20 that's a lot there's a lot of complaints there's a lot of things that women are complaining about there's a lot of things that we're doing wrong that we need to make adjustments in let's just have a transparent conversation let's just be honest let's remove ego let's remove pride and let's have a conversation that is solution oriented because when it's finger pointing and accusatory and it's said with vitriol and contempt and attitude and sucking your teeth and rolling your eyes and snapping your fingers and I, and you know what it can be off-putting and so therefore they're not receptive and if you don't tone down, I'ma just tune out. And so oftentimes we show up to these conversations with the complaint out of frustration because we just don't know what to say and we just don't know what to do and nothing ever changes. So let's figure out how to have 
a healthy conversation, create a right environment, a healthy environment for them to be receptive so that these jokers can change, be included. I'm on my journey, I'm on my path. There's some things that I'm still working on, trying to be my best self. And that is my commitment in 2022 to be the best man I can be. Let's go to the last one before we end this show. Um, <clears throat> here's the, the sixth complaint. His family drives me nuts. Now, we talk about the top five things that couples struggle with, right? sexuality, finances, communication, in-laws, and parenting. And that in-law piece, man, your family, the way they think, the way they do, their patterns, their morality, their culture. Yeah, I, we just don't do things like that. We didn't grow up like that. And now that's causing a problem. They're too involved. They too opinionated. They, 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 listen, listen, they got their own rules. And when the children are over there, things are going crazy and nuts. We, we got to We got to talk about this because your family, they drive me crazy. They're disrespectful. They don't honor me. They, they come out the side of their mouth. They just say whatever's on their mind. I've been offended. Like there's a lot going on here. When you marry someone, you're not just marrying that person. You are marrying everything that comes along with that person. There is a package. A part of that package is your family. So we need to talk about what that looks like. We need to talk about how we engage. We need to talk about the family marinades that happen because we all come from a different upbringing and we bring the culture, tradition, belief systems and, and marinate into this marriage and oftentimes it causes a problem. That's why there's a battle of cultures, family cultures, in terms of what we do and how we live life out, right? And so when there's been a conflict, when there's been a situation with your family, one of your family members, like you have to figure out how to navigate that. If we just take the approach, that's just June Bug. He's going to be who he's going to be. Well, now your spouse who is disrespected by June Bug feels unprotected by you because you were right there in the midst of the situation when it happened and you said and did nothing and you minimized it by saying that's just June Bug. So wait a minute, when, when, when it's just me, right, doing something, you have a problem with it. You make it clear, you want changes, but when it's Junebug doing it, you give Junebug a pass. It's no big deal, get over it, it is what it is. No, sucker, we got problems, we have to resolve this. And so we have to talk, listen, this speaks to the fact that you two aren't in alignment in terms of certain values, certain protocols, certain methodologies, in terms of how you handle particular things. And oftentimes, because we're blood related to people, we have a tendency of minimizing what may, has, what may have been done, which forces our spouse to maximize because they're not emotionally connected to the family. They're not blood related to the family. So there's a different angle and position that they're coming from. And so this is why we need to have these conversations when we have our work days, right? If there's any issue with the family, the work day is the day that is designed to talk through it and to come up with something that is mutually beneficial for both parties involved. And this is why we walk couples through the marriage negotiation worksheet, because it is a solution oriented document that guides you to resolution. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can resolve June bug and the rest of them, mama and them, when they crazy. You can resolve it because there's a pathway that, that, that you're going through. There, there is a tool that you're submitting yourself to and you're operating in it. It'll work if you work it. Listen, we're just wetting your appetite. We've only hit six or seven. There's more to come in the week to follow. Listen, have an amazing weekend. We appreciate you tuning in. I hope that you like, share, and subscribe with those that you're connected to. Let's build this community so that not only our household changes, but households around the world are changed one by one because they're willing to do what's necessary. Love you guys. See you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Boom.